Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a fool. I, I've had lots and lots of people over the years at least uh, talk about um, the sacrifices and wondering what in the world's going on, particularly the Old Testament sacrifices. Uh, again, can be a very confusing thing. And today is your opportunity uh, to learn what's going on, at least an overview. There's much more that could be said. Um, but these things, they, they aren't just weird. They actually communicate things and make some sense. So again, uh, I think that people maybe actually want to, people, when people say that they have problems with this or questions about it, I'm, I'm addressing it as if we really do want to understand these things. And, and I think there's a lot of good stuff that can come out of this. Um, so today we are talking about sacrifices, which are important, but, but often a perplexing part of the Old Testament. Now, some th people think of the whole sacrificial system as a bit shady. Shady in the sense that something ain't right or, or something's off about them being there. But the author of Hebrews describes sacrifices in the Old Covenant given to Moses at Mount Sinai, not as shady, but as shadowy. Hebrews chapter 10 says, the Mosaic law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. They are only a shadow. Hearkening, usually we might think of going back, but in this case, hearkening forward in the Old Testament to something greater. So let's talk shadows. A shadow only exists because of something else. Uh, the shadow is not actually the thing itself. And unless you're Peter Pan, your shadow can't exist apart from you, right? You cast a shadow. You could have, for instance, a tree, but no, not have a shadow, say, for instance, at night. But you couldn't have a tree's shadow if the tree wasn't there. Well, the Old Testament sacrifices exist, only exist, to show us Jesus' sacrifice. They are not the good thing, a good thing, except that they orient people towards God instead of just being inward focused. But their most important purpose is to point us to Christ and his sacrifice for us. So uh, the Mosaic Law, which we're talking about, you know, the Ten Commandments, but also all 613 of the laws written in the Torah, is not really the most important thing. It's a shadow cast back from Jesus. The Torah, the Old Testament, is not eternal, and the law can't really offer a solution to sin. It, it can't resolve the, the enmity, the, the conflict between us and God. But the New Testament, the new relationship based on Christ, is eternal. Now, the purpose... You know, why was the law given? Well, the purpose for which God created the law and the Old Covenant is clear. God gave the laws in order to make a people that were different from the world and his, ultimately a people who trusted him. The law was there to steer them away from idols and deadly sin and towards God who alone can sustain and give life. You know, God didn't want his people to follow idols who could do nothing. He wanted them to follow him because he was committed to saving them. God who wanted to take care of his Old Testament people. Yet the Mosaic law was never, never effective. Not even for a single second. Because maybe you remember the story. Even as Moses is up on Mount Sinai receiving in the process of getting these laws from Yahweh, the Israelites are having simultaneously an epic fail. They have not just broken a law or two. They have betrayed the very heart of their relationship with Yahweh, who was, as they failed, putting together their wedding vows. But Israel failed before the laws even came down the mountain by worshiping a golden calf, one they had made. So the laws were not even finished being written on stone before Israel had heinously broken them. Um, well, God 
uh, very clearly laid out what he wanted. The people very clearly didn't do what God wanted. Thankfully, he made an allowance for shortcomings. When Israel broke a law, Yahweh still wanted to be their savior. The sacrifices were a way for Israel to show its sorrow and teach them sin's cost. Through them, the nation admitted its sin, confessing their shortcomings and their need for forgiveness. And this was why God um, instituted the sacrifices. Yahweh clearly and repeatedly communicates that he doesn't need this offering. It's not like God had a hankering for a sacrificial snack. Um, We often think of sacrifices as weird, but they serve very positive, several very positive roles. First of all, um, uh, if you go back to um, to the praise one, um, the first one for for one, offerings were a gift from the Israelites uh, to worship God and give Him glory. We live today. We live in a money driven society, but the Israelites didn't. They Rather, value was most commonly attached to things like grain, wine, and new and animals. Um, this is how you bartered for things that you wanted. It was how you gave gifts to those you loved. So offerings were a way to show God's love, devotion, and worship. Um, secondly, offerings taught the people about sin. Um, it taught them that it was wrong to sin, and that there was costly consequences. Giving up an animal taught them sin had a cost, and sin leads to death. This was an important lesson, not for just for them to know, but to digest and take to heart. So God hoped to ingrain this in his people with um, central and and everyday part of their, it was a central and everyday part of their devotional life, these sacrifices. Thirdly, it reminded them that life and, and a positive relationship with God was a gift, not something to be taken for granted. He had bought and brought his people back, saving them from slavery, saving them from Pharaoh's tyranny, and from Pharaoh's chariots. He repeatedly provides for them in the wilderness. You know, In other words, God's clearly not bloodthirsty. God had rather tenderly cared for and rescued this people, but he did want them to learn and he was wise and good enough to follow through and punish his people when necessary. Uh, fourthly, these sacrifices were sanctioned and a sanctioned and guaranteed way to repair the relationship between Yahweh and his people. I mean, when you hurt someone you love, you, you, when you hurt someone you truly love, you want to make things right with them. Don't you ask them, you know, I, you say, I, I know I've messed up. What can I do? to make things better. Well, the sacrifices not only demonstrated Israel's sorrow over their sin, it was a way for Israel to take a a concrete step in the right direction, demonstrating that repairing, fixing the relationship with Yahweh was important to them. Um, Nevertheless, despite all these positive roles sacrifices played, uh, the very nature and instructions of these sacrifices were also proof of something else. And this is what Hebrews points out. The old sacrifices, the Old Testament sacrifices, they had to take place constantly. Some were weekly, some were annually, some were required whenever certain sins were committed. The point is they were ongoing and there was no instructions on when to stop offering them. These sacrifices were not fixing things in a complete way, otherwise, they would have stopped at some point. Even even the Old Testament writers are aware of this. Psalm 40 says, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will. Now, what's, what's that all mean? Well, David is saying, what God really wants is not um, sacrifice. What God really wants is for us to follow God's lead and to trust him. What God wants is hearts that are aligned with his people, with his people who will do the right thing, who who will be just to the world and, and faithful to Yahweh. 
David, for, for all his major flaws, was a man after God's own heart. He wanted what God wanted and strove to accomplish it. And that's actually what God is really after. And that's what that psalm is saying. It's, God doesn't need all these sacrifices. It's These sacrifices were used to demonstrate this, but that's not really what God wanted. What God wants is a heart, a life, a, a will aligned with his. Um, well, Jeremiah 31, another Bible verse from the Old Testament quoted in this Hebrew section, admits that the Old Covenant was not fixing people's hearts and minds. It, again, even in the Old Testament, they already know this. The prophets are pointing this out. So God would eventually come up with a new covenant, a covenant even more permanent than one that was written in stone, like the, the Old Covenant. It would be a covenant written on human hearts. And then he would truly forgive. And then the goal behind the sacrifices, what these sacrifices were aiming to do, would be fulfilled. And that is what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to do God's will, to follow his Father's plan, um, not, just, not only at the cross, although certainly culminating the cross, cross, but throughout his life, Jesus did what his Father's plan was. He said what his Father wanted him to say. Jesus offered, you know, the psalm says, but a body you have prepared for me, that's Psalm 40. Jesus offered his body, his, his very life, as, as if he were a lamb being led to the slaughter. Um, he lived his life as a sacrifice to God. Jesus did what God said, even if it meant dying in the process. Um, he, he went as a lamb led to the slaughter, but the difference was that he both knew and spoke of the what and the why he would lay down his life. It was to create this new covenant. It was to make God's people's hearts right. It was to do what God wanted and to offer his very life, laying down his life as he was lifted up upon a cross. Because um, we know it's not from the blood of bulls and goats, but from the freely shed blood of Christ that things have been made right now between us and God. Because what God wants is faithfulness. And Jesus was faithful. God wants us also to follow him, uh, to follow his will. He doesn't need us to pay him something. He simply wants us to, to listen to him. Jesus, with his body, his, his life, was faithful and pursued God's will. The life, you know, the life found in the blood of Christ was holy because he followed God's will. And that's why God sees us as holy, because this blood, that the life is in the blood um, in the Old Testament, this life of Jesus, not just the death, but his life in the blood that covers us and uh, makes us righteous in God's sight. Um, because in his sacrifice, Jesus fulfilled, we talked about all those different ways, the, sacri the things, the sacrifices were intended to do. Um, Jesus accomplished all of them. When, for instance, worship, when we worship God we remember and rely upon the sacrifice of our Savior. The, the cross, the sacrifice of Christ is at the very center of our worship. The cross also clearly teaches us that sin is painful, uh, even if it is painful for our Savior when it should have been painful for us. It teaches us that the cross leads, or that sin leads to death. But Jesus' sacrifice also teaches us that our lives are a gift. In fact, his death, just like for the Israelites, his death has redeemed us from the power of sin, death, and the devil. And furthermore, we are connected to Christ's sacrifice, which guarantees our forgiveness. And we've been given this new covenant and God's spirit, which begins to transform our hearts and minds so that we too imperfectly attempt to live our lives Likewise, according to God's will, as, as living sacrifices. Um, the sacrifices of the Old Testament are, are helpful teaching tools. And as we look more closely at them, and even more importantly, uh, they point us to Christ and our new life in Him. And now, because of all that our Savior has done for us, our lives have been forever changed. And we now always live our lives in the, 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 in the refuge and the shadow 
of Christ's cross and sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen.